Okay, so hi everyone. In this topic, we are going to learn uh, C sharp functions. Okay, what is functions? So whenever you want to reuse the block of statements, let's say you are having four to five statements, which you want to reuse again and again. In that case, uh, you cannot write the same statement again and again in the program. Just make a separate function, call that function when you want to execute the same line of code. Okay. So two, two or three things. One is function, function signature, function definition, function calling. It's a thin question. So let me open the program. Yes, I'll give me cardun taku satya. Okay. I just wanted to create a function which will do some operation for me. Okay. So what I will do, uh, I wanted to create one function like static. void addition to a print success message as a function I whenever I will call this function it will just print console dot right line success message picture is a little me print welcome message Welcome message. Right line print. Welcome to program. So the work of this function is to print this line. Okay. So we are having this function definition. This is function definition. And if I want to call this function from here, this is nothing but your function calling. function column and this is your function signature function signature like that okay function definition means this one function cha aaj je apan statement lilela sa that is called as function definition function chi ji signature asel that means function sa now it's a return type and there is a parameter list so this is your function signature and function calling means just call that function in order to execute the statement available inside that function. So that is your function definition, function calling. Okay. So in this sort of topic, what is function name? Function name means each and every function can have their own name in order to determine what we are going to do inside that function. Okay. So this print welcome message by reading the name only, we should be kept to know. What we are going to do? What we are going to do here? We are printing the welcome message inside this function. So that is that this is the usage of this function. So this is name. We cannot have another function with the same name. Okay, like this. We cannot do that. It will throw an exception. That is, program file already defined a member called welcome message. Print welcome message with the same parameter. So you cannot do that. You can do function overloading, but that we will learn in the this one, uh, oops concept. But here, in order to understand how to declare function name, you should have a unique name to your function. Function overloading is a different concept where you can use the same name, but you should have a different parameter list that we will learn in detail later. But at this stage, just understand you cannot create a duplicate name for a function. Same function with the duplicate. Okay. Now, uh, next one is return type. Return type means if you want to return something from this function, you can create the return type here, integer float character. But in this case, I have added the void. Void means nothing. I don't want to return anything. So that's why there is no return keyword here. And that's why uh, we have added the void keyword here. Void means return nothing. Okay. And next one is parameter list or body. Okay, function body means this is the statement and parameter list means here we can pass the input value to that function. So here we can define the parameter list. Now, if I just create the function like this and I don't call that function, then what will happen? It will not execute anything. It will not give a call to function. This code is recited to your program, but that code is not going to execute. Why it is not going to execute? Because 
we have just defined the function. We haven't called that function. We haven't used that function in our program. So main is a entry point method. Inside this main function, we have to call this function in order to execute this statement. So first of all, call the function like that. Print welcome message and run the program again. You can see welcome to the program. Okay, like this. Welcome to the program. So this statement will get executed when you will call this function from your main method. Okay. So how to call by using the function name and the parenthesis. This is the parenthesis open and close. Okay. By using the parenthesis, you can pass the parameter, but this function does not accept any parameter. That's why I haven't passed anything. Okay. Inside this, I'm just uh, writing this statement to print the value on the console. That is welcome to the program. So, I have a function ka create a function ki mala his now first part execute kare. The saki mala he now mala dahaves execute kare. So, me dahaves the function call kuru hukuna so. He line dahaves lay the kam ne. Udaya the pony sang it love. So, welcome to the program mother. Ha p mala small by program to be small by. Magapel daha line la don't change kare the garaz ne. We are having a centralized code here. If I make this piece small, it will become small for all 10 places. You can see P, 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 small. Why this happened? Because we are having a centralized code, which we are just calling from the different, different location. So we don't have to go to each and every location to change that. You can change the function definition anytime. It will affect on all the such locations from where we are calling it. And also here you can see how many times this function get calls. Five references. Five references means this function got called five times. From where? From program.cs5. Line number 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Okay. So this many times this function got called. That's why it has a five references. So this is how you can create the function without any parameter list, without any return type, in order to keep the definition of program centralized and avoid the redundancy. Like the Tumala Dahawe is a print character, I love to be Dahawe line there. One, two, three, four, five. That is not good. So whatever business logic we are having, that business logic can be go inside one function and call that business logic from 10 places. To make it centralized. Okay. So that's why we need to create the functions in a C sharp. I'm calling it as a function, but you can also call it as a method. Method Sudha Panera Munushap. C sharp functions. He was C sharp methods. Okay. We have just saw this one. C sharp function using no parameters and written types. Okay. Here function let me contact Prakata parameter pass Kelela Naye. Kiva. Now I just wanted to pass one parameter. What parameter I want to pass? I want to pass the name of the user like string name console dot read line. And before that, I will write one message like console dot write line. Enter your name. Okay. So user will come to know what he need to do. He will just add the name of himself, like a gish and enter. So here we are showing welcome to the program. So I wanted to show message like well, welcome Bhagesh to the program. Welcome to the program Bhagesh like that. So whatever name I will add, that name I wanted to pass as a parameter. Okay. And that parameter I will catch here. And that value I will use in this statement. We will just send the parameter like this. Name. We will cache that parameter here. Like this. And then we will print that name here. Okay. So, first of all, we are asking user to enter something. Something means their name. User will enter his name. That name we are passing as a value to this function. 
that name will come here as a parameter. That parameter we are using while printing the message on the console. Welcome to the program, Bhagesh. Welcome to the program, Pratiksha. Welcome to the program, Prashik. Welcome to the program, Gaurav. Whatever name we will add in the console, that will get printed here. Okay. So this is the dynamic program now. You can see, enter your name. Welcome to the program, Bhagesh. Okay, next. Enter your name. Let's say Ruchira. Enter. Welcome to the program, Ruchita. So, this is how we can just pass the name to the function. Okay. Now, you will, you will say that, sir, what is the usage of having these many lines? I can directly copy this line from here. And instead of calling the function, I will just add that line. So what is the use of that function? Okay, I agree. There is no use in this case. If this line is going to repeat again and again, then you will have to create the function. Like, I wanted to take the name of two candidates. Let's say Bhagesh and Kalpesh. I wanted it two members. So in that case, what will happen? Enter your name, name one. Okay. Then again, enter your enter, enter name of candidate one. So this is your name one. Let's say you are playing Ludo. You will need to add four names, right? So that's why enter name of candidate two, player one, player two, three, four. Okay, at least two player will be there in the Ludo. One player cannot play without computer. So you will have to write a name for at least two players. Let's add player name, player one, player two. So I have one player, player name one, player name two, right? Now I wanted to print immediately. Once I enter the name, I wanted to print that message. Welcome to the program, player one, right? I'm not using the function. Welcome to the program. player two, right? I'm not calling the function anymore. Okay, so I will show you the importance of using function. Okay, in this case, you can see the program, main, enter the name of player one, you got that name, you print that name, enter the name of player two, you got that name, you print that. Name. But if you carefully read the program, we are having this line duplicated eventually. This is not the right way to do. If someone asks you to change something in this message, welcome to the program, colon, Yafir, this arrow, and then player name. And you are having this line hundreds of times you, in your program. You will have to copy, paste hundred times. You will die. Your program will die. This is not good. The, the search lines, which are going to be duplicated again and again, move such lines into the function, make it centralized, call them using the input value, use this input value in your message. And then whatever change later someone asks you to do, you just have to do that change at one location. It will reflect at 10 locations from where we are calling that function. Okay. Now see the output. Enter the name of player one. Player one. Welcome to the program player one. Enter the name of player two. Player two. Welcome to the program player two. But even though it is producing the same output, if I go inside the program, if someone look this one, they will immediately suggest you don't repeat this statement again and again. Make it centralized. How to make it centralized? Create a centralized function like this. Print welcome message. Take the name as a parameter. Welcome to the program, whatever name is. Add the arrow. If someone asks you to add arrow, you can add that. And call this function without adding the line like this. Just call that function. Enter. Send the value. This time player one. Okay. Call the function again for this one and send the value. This time player two. So this is how you can. You can. 
make use of functions. So this is the importance of function. You can see this function we are calling from two places, two references, right? Line number 13 and 18. Is it correct? 13, 18. But we are calling it for different purposes. First purpose is to player the print the name of player one. Second purpose is for print the name of player two. Eventually, logic is the same. Input value will be different. That's why message will be different. Okay, enter the name of layer one. I'm just trying to add Ravi. Welcome to the program, Ravi. Enter the value of layer two, Prashik. Welcome to the program, Prashik. Okay, so this is how you can make your code centralize, repetitive code centralize across all the locations. Okay. Any doubt so far? How to create function, how to call function, how to pass the parameter y value? Any doubt? No doubt. Great. Okay. Now, how to get the return type? Okay. Let's say I have another function study. Uh, this function is, let's say void. I wanted to uh, calculate the tax. Okay. Let's say I wanted to calculate the tax of my current income. So in that case, I will need a function which will help me to calculate the tax. Let's say enter your total salary. Let's not income, enter price. Okay. I'm just going to buy the product from Amazon and I wanted to apply the 18% GST. Okay. So enter price, product price, let's say. And there is one function which will help me to calculate the test. So here I will add that function. Without function, let's do that first. Without function, without using the function. Okay. So what will be the formula? This is the price, right? Price is in integer format, right? So console dot read line. Sorry. Convert to end 32. I got the price, total price. Okay, total price. And this is nothing but the integer. I wanted to calculate the GST. So what will be the formula integer GST is equal to total price J 18%. Okay. Plus total price, right? You get 18% uh, tax or sell total tax. Achha, GST calculate it. Okay, so total price is 18 percent by Jagala. formula Okay, you will get the GST amount. Now, this is your price actually. This is your GST formula integer. This is your total price. Total price is GST plus price. This is your final amount to pay. Now print that up. Right line, total price. Then right line, GST. Right line, price. Okay. We'll print everything. So here I'm just printing the price is equal to price. Okay. Let me use the interpolation now. I guess we can use that here. Price is equal to price. Okay. Interpolation of other apples are not known. Yes. Here you can use that. Okay. Dollar double quotation price. 
is equal to price. Then next one is GST. Amount GST is equal to GST. And then next one is total price. Okay. Is equal to total price, whatever it is. Okay. And now, okay, spelling mistake. Let me change it. Total price. Great. So this is your calculation part. So you will get the price. It's a hundred rupees. GST is eighteen percent. That is eighteen rupees. You will get eighteen here. And then 18 plus 100, it will become 118. Here it will print 100, 18, 100. Okay, let's see. Total product price is 100 rupees. So your price is 100, GST is 18. So that's why your total price became 118. So some spelling mistake. So this is your formula. Now, I have 10 product, products, okay. Every product has its own price. So how will you do that? Okay, price one, this is the product, price one. I have one more product, enter product one price. Okay, so price one, price one, price one. Okay, I have another, another product again, which is enter product, Two price, four of two price. Now, in order to calculate the GST and all, I will have to write these many lines again here and pass product two, product two, product two, right? And again, GST two, GST two, like that. So this time, fine. But I have 10 more products. So in that case, you are saying, I will have to write, repeat these many lines again and again, 10 times. So this is not good, right? You can say output will be same. Output is product one price is 100 rupees. So this is your product two price is 200 rupees. So this is for that, no problem. But let's say you are having thousands of products. In that case, should we repeat all these lines again and again? Is that right case? No. This is not the right way to go, right? In this case, you should have a function which will calculate the GST for you. Calculate the GST and total price for you. Okay, so what I will do, what I will do, I will move all these lines into a separate function. Static, void, calculate, tax. And parameter will be price and add those lines inside this function. Okay. In this calculate tag, I will just call here like this. This is very important. Okay. And this price, I will just add. Here. That's it. We don't need to repeat those lines here. We will just call that function. Calculate tax for price two. Oh, yeah. Okay, and I will add slash n to make the difference between two products. And this is the interpolation. You can see it was not working on that uh, JS Peter, but it is working here because we are using the latest version of the C sharp. Start the program. You will see the same output. Product price, 100. This is your tax. Product to price, 200. This is your tax. Okay, 118, 236. That's why this is the total price. So this is the importance of magic of function. It is very important thing. If your code is repeating again and again, don't do that. Okay. You can shift such lines, which are going to be common between, uh, common between all these uh, products. You can shift those line as a function, give a proper name, your proper parameter list and make use of that again and again. Don't have to create a function, uh, repeat that line in the same program. Now, if you have hundred thousands of products, don't worry. Just call this function, that's it. 
call this function in a loop for loop make an array of all the prices okay array what is array we have that topic uh, next topic but make an array of this uh, prices repeat this uh, statement again and again using the for loop that's it 100 1000 1000 any number of times you can repeat this function you don't have to repeat these many lines in your program this is the beauty of this one function okay now what is return type of function you can see where i'm void void now i wanted to return something what i wanted to do i wanted to print a gst i wanted to get the gst only calculate tax and print this is the name of this function right but i wanted to only get calculate and get the tax i don't want to print okay so in that case i will write one more function here calculate tax i will send the price i got the gst and i will return that return gst that's it and here return type will be integer that's it so this function is not going to print anything i wanted to print a gst outside of this function i wanted to use that gst for different purpose so that's why the only only work of this function is to calculate the gst i don't want to apply this formula again and again because we are not let's say we are not good in the math for calculating this formula we need some uh, mathematical logic we don't have that let's say so we don't want to repeat this logic again and again we will just create a function we'll ask someone to create this function he will create for you you just have to call that function and he has already added the mathematical operations there how to calculate tax and all okay so here i want gst gst is equal to calculate tax that's it i got gst i don't know what is the statements we have written inside this function another developer came he provided me this function not sure what he has done inside this function but whenever i am calling this function it is returning me proper gst okay i am not sure the formula i am not aware about the definition of this function but whenever i am calling this function it is uh, returning me gst so that is the use of return type okay this is abstraction let's say abstraction means you are not sure the underlying implementation you are not sure the actual execution of a program but you are getting the output correct output expected output so that is the abstraction like you are pressing the let's say you are driving the car pressing the brake and then it car got stopped you don't have to worry about why it got stopped how it got stopped you just press the brake and it got stopped that's it you got the expected output so this is same thing of we are doing here there is some code someone has written inside this function i am not sure what he has written but i just wanted to get the expected output calculate tax and it will return you the tax that's it so calculate tax function will take the input that's the price it will apply some logic on that price and eventually give me the tax value so this is the tax and i want to use that tax like whatever you say like i can print the text on the console console dot right line text is equal to gst okay now this function this is the function name this is the parameter name this is the return type and return type is integer that's why i am getting saving that value in the integer variable all as gst whatever value i will get here i am just printing that on the console that's it run it product one price is 100 tax is 10 okay so this is how it is working got an idea what is return type what is function name what is parameter list samajh laga function kadi create karaycha samajh la जेव्हा आपल्याला असा लाईन ऑफ कोड परत परत एक्झिक्यूट करायचा असतो डोंट रिपीट दॅट कोड अगेन अँड अगेन इन्स्ट ऑफ दॅट तसा कोड मूव्ह करायचा फंक्शन मध्ये आणि त्या फंक्शनला काहीतरी नाव द्या 
ओके फंक्शन कॉल करा नेक्स्ट वन फंक्शन लिखाने पैरामीटर लिस्ट कभी दी जेव तुम्हारा एखाद डायनेमिक वैल्यू पास कराएगी कारण की प्राइस का कैलक्युलेट टैक्स मटल तो टैक्स का शंबर रुपये कैलक्युलेट नहीं करना अपन प्रत्येक वे अपन जो प्रोडक्ट की प्राइस जो दौनशे रुपये तो मैं अपन प्राइस हा वेरिएबल डायनेमिक पैरामीटर ने पास के मग प्राइस इन टू एटीन डिवाइडेड बाय हंड्रेड ओके जे कहीं फॉर्म्यूला जीएसटी 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 अपन रिटर्न करते रिटर्न करते हैं फंक्शन च जी आउटपुट ना रिटर्न कर रिटर्न का कर बिकॉज दैट फंक्शन वी आर कॉलिंग हियर सो आई वॉन्ट आउटपुट आई एम एक्सपेक्टिंग सब आउटपुट हियर मैं जो मतलब कैलक्युलेट टैक्स कैलक्युलेट टैक्स कैलक्युलेट कर दिलाजे मतलब तो दिला मैं प्रिंट करू शो ऑपरेशन करू शो ओके सो दैट्स वाई वी नीड द रिटर्न टाइप सो दिस इज रिटर्न टाइप दिस इज पैरामीटर लिस्ट दिस इज फंक्शन नेम दिस इज फंक्शन डेफिनेशन और फंक्शन बॉडी एंड वी नीड दैट ओके इंटर प्रोडक्ट प्राइस ये मजेक प्राइस कहीं तरी ऑर्ड है चारशे तेवीस टैक्स इज सेवी सिक्स यू कैन कैलक्युलेट इट लेटर नो प्रॉब्लम ओके या फंक्शन मध्य लॉजिक अपन लिखे कि जी कहीं प्राइस एट्टी पर्सेंट मैं रिटर्न कर एटीन पर्सेंट जीएसटी समझ लनी डाउट वाई वी नीड फंक्शन सर मग क्या कैलक्युलेट टैक्स प्राइस मध्य रिटर्न करते वैल्यू मैं वॉइड रिटर्न टाइप लिखे कुछ रिटर्न करते दाखवा टोटल प्राइस 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 नहीं अपन नहीं प्रिंट करना नहीं फंक्शन ने दिल्ली आउटपुट वरती मैं अजु ऑपरेशन कर समझा ओके सो दैट्स वाई आई वॉन्टेड टू गेट द जीएसटी मग जीएसटी घर ऑपरेशन कर डिस्काउंट लाइनल प्राइस कैलक्युलेट कर सो इन दैट केस आई वॉन्ट टू रिटर्न समथिंग मग हाथ कैलक्युलेट टैक्स फंक्शन ने का प्राइस कैलक्युलेट के लिए प्रिंट नहीं के लिए फिर रिटर्न के लिए रिटर्न के डिस्काउंट देते समझा कि बाबा आीएसटी मैनस इक्वल टू मैं आ जीएसटी मधन एक दोन रुपये डिस्काउंट दया ओके okay, ऑपरेशन कर फक्त को प्रोडक्ट वन सा प्रोडक्ट टू सा नहीं कर प्रोडक्ट टू सा मैं करना प्रोडक्ट टू सा मैं फंक्शन कॉल करना जीएसटी चा पद्धति ने डिस्काउंट नहीं लगे डायरेक्ट प्रिंट कर पद्धति ओके जीएसटी टू जीएसटी टू जी प्राइस पठवना प्राइस टू आता का Why we need this value? Because I wanted to give a discount for product one, but not for product two. Manu, upon this function, what did we do? That is, calculate the current value. Did it? That is, two hundred percent discount. Did it? And we print it. Did it? Yes, sir. Did upon the same function call did it? That is, GST did it. That is, discount not did it. Then, as such, as we print it. But then we print the operation that the function that after did it is sale. So I cannot discount. Add the discount. ये फंक्शन का रिटर्न नहीं करते ये फंक्शन कैलक्युलेट करते हैं प्रिंट करते ये फंक्शन का फिर कैलक्युलेट कर आउटपुट देते हैं तो आउटपुट अपन इतना घर डिस्काउंट लाला मैं प्रिंट के आउटपुट घज इट इज प्रिंट के सो ऑन दैट आउटपुट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू डू सम एडिशनल ऑपरेशन इन दैट केस यू विल हैव टू रिटर्न द वैल्यू फ्रॉम दिस फंक्शन दैट्स इट एंड यू कैन यूज दैट वैल्यू लेटर इन द प्रोग्राम फॉर डिफरेंट डिफरेंट ऑपरेशन आता बहुत शंबर रुपया प्रोडक्ट होता तस जीएसटी कि सोलह आला कारण की दोन रुपये जी एस डिस्काउंट दिला ना पर प्रोडक्ट टू पंबर रुपया है तो अठरा भराव लगते कारण डिस्काउंट नहीं है सो दैट्स वाई वी नीड टू रिटर्न द वैल्यू ओके सर स्टैटिक स्टार्टिंग बर इंट कैलक्युलेटर हा जो स्टैटिक एवडे ना वेन यू वॉन्ट टू कॉल द फंक्शन बाय यूजिंग द क्लास लाइक प्रोग्राम डॉट मेन प्रोग्राम डॉट कैलक्युलेट प्रोग्राम डॉट कैलक्युलेट टेक्स्ट इन दैट केस यू विल हैव टू राइट द 
static keyword. But you cannot call the non-static method from the static method. Main method is by default static because whenever you will run the program, the compiler will call this method initially. This is the entry point method. And compiler la program ya class to object banwaisa nai. Compiler want to call this method by using the class name dot method name. That's why it is static. And as it was a static. I had to write all the function as a static because we cannot call non-static method from the static, static method. method. Yes. That was the static keyword card. An object reference is a non-static field method or property. You can only call the static method from this function. That's why, unfortunately, I had to write it as a static. That's the only reason. Yes, so much. Any other doubt? Sir. Hello? Let me stop. Uh, sir, uh, Give me a minute. Uh, sir, after uh, line number 20.